and welcome to Chase's Everything Shooting. Today's episode is why the heck are the gunpowder and the ammo prices going through the roof? Well, I'm going to get to that and I'll probably hit the exact cause at the very end of this video. So stay tuned. Don't miss out why you're paying more for your hunting and reloading and shooting ammunition. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to get off of the table here is I want to say thank you to a couple of people in Washington, D.C. that have given me inside information of what's going on and what's happening in the DOD and the general reason of why things are happening uh, in the gun industry and our ammunition and our powder, powder costs. So I want to say thank you. I know there's subscribers and watchers, so thank you very much. I appreciate what you give us. And I know I can't say your name or tell who you work for, but um, I just wanted to make sure you know that you're appreciated. All right, well, let's get down to it. Why the heck are prices for ammunition and gunpowder going through the roof? Well, some of you may say, well, it's President Biden and he's he's got everybody, the prices are going up on food like it's going out crazy and all these other items. Well, you know what? Yeah, you're right. Part of that, you're right. It is Biden, but part of it isn't Biden. Part of it is other outside issues that are coming to our industry that most of us don't know and most of us don't even think about. And that's part of our problem is, is that we don't know until after it's already happened to us and we're kind of sitting back there like we were with primers. What's going on? Where'd they go? What's happening? I can't believe we can't find a primer. So here is what's happening and why it's happening in our market. Well, the first indicator that came out was a letter from Vista Outdoors to all their clients. And they sent this letter out and I'm just gonna briefly read parts of it to you. And that was, it says, thank you uh, for your business and your continued support of American jobs in manufacturing. Due to the events, our suppliers have notified us uh, of a unanticipated demand for an unanticipated global shortage of gunpowder, okay? So they're talking about a shortage of gunpowder. I talked about that shortage nine months ago coming. And if you look in the uh, description blocks be uh, below, you'll see a link to that. And you can go kind of look at it and see what's going on and what I predicted back about nine months ago. But it's coming to a fruition now. And so let's kind of talk about that. We're looking at one to seven percent increase on all of our uh, shells. And we're also looking at a 10 percent increase and very limited availability of gunpowder. Now, primers are going to go up five percent, but primers are not existent. So it, they could go up 150 percent. It really wouldn't make any difference because really they're very, very hard to find right now. But let's talk about why this is happening and what the root cause of this is. Well, I don't want to give you a history lesson, but I'm going to give you a short history lesson here. You know, this all really started back when uh, Russia invaded Ukraine. And there was a craziness about it and we and, and 
the USA wanted to help Ukraine and we wanted to stop um, communism. And so we're out there sending uh, ammunition, munitions to the Ukrainians. Ukrainians, I'm sorry. Okay, so in mid-2022, the U.S. government sent Ukraine 35,000 small arms, M4s, M16s, along with a few grenade launchers. On top of that, they sent 300 million rounds of ammunition. Now, that's small arms ammunition. That's not the, uh, the rockets and all the other stuff. That's just small arms munitions. Now, around that same time, we were all talking about the uh, Ukrainian army sending up 6,000 artillery shells a day. Okay? 6,000 artillery shells a day. Well, at that time, the American production plants for artillery shells were only making about 6,000 a month. Okay? So they're chewing up one month supply every day. So our stockpile is starting to dwindle and the DOD is sending these over and it's coming out of the DOD's inventory. So the Defar Department of fin Defense has come out and said, hey, we need to start replacing the artillery shells, the ammunition, everything else that we're sending. So they have gone out to their contracts and the plants that contract with the DOD and said, for artillery shells, we need 8,000 to go from 8,000 or 6,000 a month to 8,000 a month. Within the next six to 10 months, we need to go to 28,000 a month. And after that, we wanna to head to 80,000 a month. Okay, those are artillery shells. Now, most of you are gonna go, well, what difference does that make? Are the, the compounds that are in artillery shells aren't the same as what's in our, uh, our gunpowder that we use for our small ammunition. Well, you're not really right there. And I know on my post nine months ago, people did this whole thing. Well, when we get to the end, I'll explain why. But this, is being, this has become a huge problem for the DOD. They're sending out more than they can make, and that's dwindling our supplies, and they don't want our supplies to get too low. So now all of a sudden, the DOD is saying, hey, we've got to get this under control. Well, in November of 2023, President Biden signed an executive order to send 14,000 tank artillery shells to Israel. He didn't have Congress approve it. It was an executive order, and those were also pulled from our inventory. So, as you can see, with all these other countries pulling from our inventories, things are starting to shrink. And the DOD has come to a point where they've said, hey, we've got to get this under control. We need to start building our stockpiles back up so we need you contractors and your plants to come through with larger amounts of production than what you're usually doing. So now we know in the past that, hey, when big government orders come through, who suffers? We do. The shooters, the hunters, the reloaders, we all start to suffer. And so, Part of the problem that we're starting to see is, is that 
things, those items that are in production now, the price is going way up. If we want to buy 556, 223, 9mm, 45 ACP, those prices are going up. Along with, if you can find them, the primers are going through the roof. And along with gunpowder, if you can find what you want, it's an expensive product right now. And those of us who reload, we want gunpowder. We need gunpowder in order to keep the process going. So you can see that those prices are going to start skyrocketing and the inventories are going to shrink. Now, let's talk about why this is happening. It's not only because the government is demanding more production than what these companies and these, these corporations can produce. No, they, they can probably up their production rates, but it's like it was in 2020, 2021, 22, when we had the start of COVID, we had supply chain issues. And that's what's starting to affect us in the retail side that we get of our ammunition, our gunpowder, our bullets, our primers, everything else. So, Let's get to the heart of what the real problem is. It isn't lead. It isn't brass. It is nitrocellulose. Nitrocellulose? What the heck is nitrocellulose? Well, I had to do some research myself. Nitrocellulose is used in gunpowder. It's used in some form of your primers. It's used in, in, your, in some form, be it dry, be it fibrous, or be it liquid in artillery shells from 105 millimeter up to 155 millimeter artillery shells. So what we're starting to see is the nitrocellulose market is starting to shrink because we are going after as much as we can find. Now, you go, well, you know, it's, it's propellant and yeah, I can see how that would happen, but nitrocellulose in, in all those different forms are used in a lot of other products. And one is printing inks. Another one is wood finishes. Another is leather finishes. Another one is foils, be it clear, be it uh, opaque, foils. Cosmetics have nitrocellulose in them. And one of the bigger ones is automobile paint. So if you look at all those other industries and say, okay, everybody wants a piece of this pie, but now the federal government's saying, no, you guys' piece of the pie has to be smaller because we have to do what's good for the country we want the nitrocellulose, then that is going to be an issue. I can guarantee that printing inks are going to go up in price. Wood finishes are going to go through the roof. Leather finishes are going to go through the roof. Foils are going to go through the roof. Cosmetics, women, if you're watching, hey, it's going to get real expensive for your cosmetics. And guess what? the paint on your car, you want to have your car repainted, you're going to pay a heavy price. The price of your cars are going to go up just because it's going to be harder to get good paint because that paint has to have nitrocellulose. So you're sitting back and going, wow, you know, this is, this is kind of crazy. 
Well, I think it is kind of crazy. We are definitely in a position right now where we're going to need to watch what's going on. And if other things happen around the world, there's going to be some shortages, some definite shortages. So think about that. Think about what we've talked about and just know that everything is going to go up around those products and around our shooting products. And you know what? That's, that's the way things are. We're not going to change it. I don't see the world calming down for a little while, but that's just the way it's going to be. So the key factor that you need to know is now you know. You know what's going on. You know what's caused this, what will continue to cause it. And now you've got to figure out how you want to deal with it. Hey, I appreciate you stopping by. I appreciate you subscribing. I really appreciate you hitting the like button because...